figured I'd take some time to do another video. Um, I think I'm gonna put this as the part two of the missing, avoiding accidents and stuff like that. When I was talking on on a previous video, I think I, I didn't forget what I titled it as. But I know it was part two of the series. Um, I had a friend of mine message me here um, a while back. We were talking. Her uh, brother, I'm not going to say his name. I'm not going to use her name just for safety reasons. But uh, her brother went missing in uh, out in Las Vegas. They uh, They found him. Uh, found his body on the side of the road uh, two weeks after he went missing, uh, decomposed. Um, they don't know if he was beheaded or not. Um, the details are sketchy. Um, they put the blame on uh, on one group. The, the officers did, and the media and everybody. They put the blame on one particular gang. I'm not going to use their name because I don't want to publicize, you know, I don't want to give them credit. But they did say it was gang related or whatever. Um, he, uh, he went missing. The, they found his body two weeks later. The details are sketchy. They're all over the place. Um, Some of the fault goes to the mom, I believe, because she lied about certain details, you know, certain tattoos he had, gave, purposely gave the cops the wrong height. When you're dealing with a missing person, with, with any missing person's case, if you're trying to get this person found, obviously you want to make sure that you give the officers their all the uh, pertinent information that you can uh, don't lie about the facts you know at that by that by that point your main concern should be getting this person home or these people home uh, regardless of what kind of condition if they if you think they might be dead you know give yourself the closure don't lie about you know any facts anything you might know anything all information helps and i know this you know it sounds common sense but this stuff happens all the time uh i don't claim to be an expert in missing people um i'm not one of those to go out there and hunt although you know for the for for missing people but you know it's something i would definitely look, be interested in you know, looking into taking some classes and then you know I'm a part time you know somebody goes missing they need search and rescue people signing up just seems like it'd be something something interesting um another thing too when you're hiking pay attention to the landmarks know the difference between a ribbon and an actual trail marker uh, I think I told the story before. I don't know. You're gonna hear it again if it, if I have. But sorry, bugs, allergies. Um, you're gonna start to rain a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, we were hiking on uh, uh, back then. It was a fairly new park, uh, Baker's Mountain State Park. Uh, just a little m mountain up. In Hickory, North Carolina, we uh, family just took a trip up there, and we were hiking. We were gonna go all the way to the top of the mountain. We uh, made it all the way to the top. We started to come back down, and there's this lady who was panting. She's out of breath, dehydrated. She said, "Can you please help me? We're I've I've been up here. Uh, I was on the Blue Trail, and it just abruptly stopped. It I was following them." the trail markers and then I just, it just the trail just ran out we're all looking at each other like the trail ran out we're on the blue trail right here it is you know and uh we were just talking to her and you know you know just you know 
Unison Company. We gave her some, you know, water, Gatorade, whatever we had. And, uh, you know, come to find out, this lady, she started out on, on the blue trail, like she said. She quit paying attention to the markers and started looking at the ribbons they had on the trees, the little blue ribbons. They were they actually had these trees marked they were going to cut down. And uh, she had, uh, apparently got off on that trail, which was very dangerous because Baker's Mountain is known for having, you know, uh, timber rattlers, eastern diamondbacks, um, copperheads. Um, so, yeah, she just, uh, she put herself at real high risk for something bad to happen. And she was by herself, you know, on top of everything else. But, you know, long story short, we got her back down, got her back to her car. And, uh, you know, the outcome was, you know, really good. Uh, <laughs> I got my cannon, right? I call it my cannon. It's a... Uh, that's my Ruger 30 out six. It's the same gun you saw me shooting two other videos. Uh, I don't know. I feel like you know if you're gonna talk about the outdoors, you know, let's talk about the outdoors. Let's you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what I got for today. But yeah, um, we'll uh, definitely get back in touch with each other. I thank you for tuning in for Calling the Wild. Um, I'll see you next time. Thanks.